Wet filament can lead to print defects, so it's important to know when it's absorbed moisture and how to dry it properly. There are two main ways you can check, the snapping method and the extrusion method. The snapping method involves bending a filament to see if it snaps. If it bends easily with some play, it's most likely fine. If it snaps easily, then it's absorbed too much moisture and needs drying. But this method isn't always reliable because filament can still cause issues even if it bends properly. So for a more accurate check, load your filament into the printer and extrude a little bit. Watch for signs of moisture, both visual and auditory. If you hear popping or sizzling sounds and see small blobs, then you've got moisture in your filament. If the filament extrudes cleanly, it's good to go. So another thing you can do to check if your filament is wet, before you even start printing with it, is to see if the packaging of the new spool is loose or compromised, as most of them are vacuum sealed. So if it's loosely fit around the filament, then it's likely that moisture has gotten in and drying may be necessary. Printing with wet filament can cause stringing, pock holes and surface blemishes, and even nozzle clogs. So always check before you print. So let's go through some low cost drying methods. The first one you can try is using a cardboard box and your printer. You can create a simple drying box by poking a few holes in the top and ensuring airflow at the bottom. Now if your printer has an enclosure, then it will probably work even better. But it's fine for non-enclosed printers too, it will probably just take longer. Some printers like the Bamboo Lab X1C have a built-in filament drying feature. For my P1S, it doesn't have that feature, but you can still do it anyway. I tested this method out using a 10 gram sponge, set the print bed to 60 degrees Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit and left it in for an hour. After an hour, it lost nearly 20% of its moisture. Bamboo even provides a drying guide for recommended times and temperatures so you don't over or underdo it. Now the downside to using your printer for this is that it will be tied up during the drying process. So for faster results, you can try using your oven. It's best to place the spool on a rack for better airflow and have that sit on a tray in case something goes wrong and the spool melts. The amount of time your filament needs in the oven varies depending on your filament and your oven. So I can't really give you a set time I would recommend. You could start off by putting it in for two hours at 60 degrees Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit, weighing it before and after so you can see if that is the right amount of time and adjusting it accordingly. I rehydrated the sponge to 10 grams again and put it in for 60 degrees Celsius for an hour. And at the end, it lost nearly 80% of its moisture. And these great results are because my oven is fan forced, not gas, and circulates the heat around really well. So if you're trying this method for the first time, don't crank the temperature up too much and check on it frequently to make sure that it's not melting. Now, if you're not in a hurry, storing filament in an airtight container with desking bags is a slow but effective method. Rechargeable desking containers can help maintain the optimal dryness of your filament. I bought these ones off Amazon as the beads actually change color when wet and make it much easier to know when to recharge them. These even have the recommended drying times and temperatures on the back. I recharged my desk and bags in the oven at 60 degrees Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit for around two hours and it worked well. But please be careful doing this as having them still in the packaging carries a risk of something going wrong, especially if you have a gas oven. So make sure you check on them every 30 minutes and keep the temperature low and make sure they're all spread out. But if you don't want to worry about this at all, that's where having purpose-built desk and tins like this can really help as they've been designed to be recharged in an oven and have no risk of catching fire. After placing the 10 gram sponge in a container with desiccant, it lost 1.4% of its moisture in an hour, compared to only 0.3% without the desiccant. This isn't a huge amount by any means, but over time, these desiccant containers can really help dry out your filament. Now food dehydrators can work, but the temperature is often hard to control. So we run into the same problem we have with the oven. Purpose-built filament dryers are designed to avoid these issues, mostly. Now before we get into the ones you can buy, let's quickly talk about the ones you can make. There are plenty of tutorials out there on how to make really cheap dryers out of a plastic container, a few cheap parts and some desiccant. But you can take it a step further by adding heating elements and a power supply. And if this is something down your alley, you can use a company like PCBWay, today's sponsor, to help with this. These guys specialize in custom PCB manufacturing, so you can design your own temperature control system or even automate the drying process with sensors and timers. Plus Plus they don't just make PCBs, they also offer 3D printing, CNC machining and sheet metal fabrication. So if you're thinking about making your own filament drying contraption or need help with an upcoming project, use the link in the description to get $5 off your first order. Now let's talk about purpose-built filament dryers. Now these are certainly not the only two filament dryers out there, but they're the only two that I currently own, so I thought I'd share my experiences with them. 
I paid for the S2 out of pocket and received the Polyphemus for free, however this doesn't dictate which one I prefer or what I'm going to say about them. The Sunlu S2 is a budget friendly option costing around $40. It dries one spool at a time, has a fan to help moisture escape, this is the upgraded version, and offers preset drying times. It has three holes to run filament through which is really handy, and a 360 degree heating element which removes the need to rotate the spool while it dries. And if you put the filament inside while printing with it, the spool will rotate naturally as it prints for even better heat distribution. Some of the downsides include an unnecessarily dark lid, which prevents you from easily seeing how much filament is left on the spool. It is prone to tipping over sometimes from high vibrations from the printer, and it has an inaccurate temperature and humidity sensor. I found this out by placing my own humidity sensor right next to the built-in one. And after having a look around online, I found that this seemed to be a fairly common problem with many other people. It's just disappointing that they included a humidity sensor that just doesn't seem to work. So if you're going to get one of these, just know that the sensors may not work properly. That said, it still seems to do its primary function of drying filament pretty well. After doing the 10 gram sponge test at 60 degrees for an hour, it lost 31.7% of its moisture. Now if you're looking for something with a few more features, then you can always try the EBOS Polyphemus. And with these extra features, it costs a little bit more at around $160. It can dry two spools at once with the option to raise the enclosure to use even bigger spools. It has a automatic humidity control system that heats up periodically to maintain a constant humidity level. And this is really handy to store your filament in while it's not in use. Just make sure you close the vent at the top so it doesn't have to heat up as much and you can save a little bit of power. It has a motor that automatically rotates the spools, adjustable fans, and spots for desk and bags. It also has plenty of holes to run your filament out of, and includes a Bowden tube to allow you to connect the dryer directly to the printer. You just need to print off a Bowden coupler and use three PC4 connectors, two for the printer, one to keep your Bowden tube in place. Using these holes at the base also means that if you want to remove the spool halfway through the print for whatever reason, you can simply take off the desk and bag cover and take it out. The downsides I've found with this dryer is that sometimes the spool would get stuck if a piece of filament was sticking out too far, or if you use a cardboard spool that is slightly damaged. Sure, using plastic spools that are wound perfectly would prevent this from being an issue, but I feel like having these rollers covered in a heat resistant rubber material would help increase friction with the spool and help prevent this from happening in the first place. Then there's the sound, and I was actually pretty surprised with this one. I was interested to see which dryer would be louder. When I turned on the S2, the sound seemed to be averaging at about 49 decibels with the lid open. With it closed, it dropped 1 decibel and went to 48. When I turned on the Polyphemus, the sound was averaging about 10 decibels quieter at 38, with the fans on low. Then I cranked the fans to full, which made it one whole decibel louder. Then I turned on the motor, which peaked the audio at around 42 decibels, which was still quieter than the S2, even with the motor, rotating spools, and extra fans. I also tested the sensors within the enclosure. The readouts that I got were 10 degrees below the present temperature and 10% above the relative humidity. So I figured that due to the fact that both of these readings were specifically off by 10 and not all over the place like the S2, this was most likely due to sensor placement and the sensor readouts from the Polyphemus were in fact correct. It was difficult to place this sensor in a way that it didn't block the built-in one and so it would get the correct reading. But if the sensor readouts are really important to you, then check out this video by MyTech Fun, where he goes into testing these sensors much more thoroughly and with more purpose-built equipment. After placing the sponge inside for an hour at 60 degrees with the fans on full, it lost 35.7% of its moisture, which was only slightly better than the S2 even with the extra fans. Then I tried the same test but with the desk and bags installed to see if that would make any difference, and this time it measured 6.24 grams, bumping it up to 37.6%. So I'd recommend using desk and bags inside the unit to dry your filament even faster. Here are the results of all the drying methods I've tried in this video if you're interested. You can see that my oven was clearly the best at removing moisture, but it's also the most likely to have something go wrong with unstable temperatures and potential damages to the filament and your oven. So just keep this in mind if you're going to use your oven for filament drying. So here are some tips when you're using a filament dryer. Keep the relative humidity inside your dryer as low as possible, ideally below 10%. Also be mindful of the temperature. 
Too hot can damage the filament and too cold won't dry it effectively. But if you follow the drying guides from the manufacturer of your filament dryer, this shouldn't be an issue. You can also use your own humidity sensor to monitor the drying process accurately. I use this one that I paid for myself. The only reason I chose this brand was because it was the cheapest and had Bluetooth connectivity so I could monitor the humidity from an app on my phone. This is not only helpful in the filament dryer, but it's also handy to put in your dry boxes to monitor the moisture levels. So you know when to recharge the desk and bags. And finally, keep filament properly stored to avoid moisture buildup in the first place. Airtight containers and desiccants are key. So if you print regularly, investing in a filament dryer is definitely worth it. It increases the quality of your prints and prevents your printer from getting stuck by a clogged nozzle. The S2 is great for occasional use, while the Polyphemus offers more advanced features for heavier use. However, for casual users, low-cost methods like oven drying or a simple drying box can do the trick just fine. Hope this video has helped you. Thanks for watching.